Here's why you struggle to move frame by frame in Final Cut Pro. I'll reveal six editing truths that will get your body moving one frame at a time. Then I'll show you how to navigate and move clips frame by frame. Next, I'll share how to nudge edit points one frame at a time. And at the end, I'll show you how to quickly jump around your project with five pro keyboard shortcuts. All right, I'm in Final Cut Pro and I've moved my playhead to the center of this clip. By the way, this is my wife looking at a smoked iguana in Panama that they eat and she does not want to eat it. <laughs> Question, would you eat a smoked iguana? So I've got my playhead in the middle of this clip and I can move forward in time by just pressing the right arrow. And that will move me forward one frame at a time. And then I can go back in time by pressing the left arrow. So now I'm moving back in the video clip one frame at a time. That's my favorite frame of this video. I can also go up to mark and then select previous and then frame. Or I can go to next and frame. If I want to move 10 frames at a time, I'll just hold down shift and press the right arrow. And that moves me forward 10 frames at a time. Or I can go back 10 frames at a time by holding shift and pressing the left arrow. Here's a quick little playback tip. When you're in your timeline, you can play and stop and reverse your videos with J, K, and L. So L will go forward in time, K will pause it, and then J will rewind. If I press J or L multiple times, it will go forward faster or reverse faster. So here's L, I'll press it three times went pretty fast. And then here's J reverse three times and we reverse fast. You can also move clips one frame at a time. I've got this clip here, this couple walking, and then I've got a little call out on top of it. And I want to move when that call out or this title happens. So I'll select the title and then I'll press period to move it forward in time one frame at a time. If I press comma, I can move it back in time one frame at a time. If I hold down shift while I press period, it will move it forward in time 10 frames. And if I press comma while I hold down shift, it will move it back 10 frames at a time. Did you know that you can move in the subframe? So right now we were just moving one frame at a time, but we can move audio in even more finer increments. I have some audio below this video clip. Let's zoom in. I'll press Z and click to zoom in real close. Okay, now look at my red skimming playhead. You'll notice a gray bar appears and it moves when I transition from one frame to another. That gray vertical bar right there represents one frame. And when it comes to audio, we can move our audio anywhere within this frame. We can do some subframe movement. And a frame is divided into 80 increments. Before we move anything, let's change our time code here. Press command comma to bring up preferences and then go to general and under time display, change it to plus subframes. So now down here, you'll see we have our time code, which is hours. Then these two numbers are minutes. This is seconds. This is frames. And then this smaller one here is subframes. So check it out. When I move, skim my playhead, you'll see the subframe count going up. Now I can move my audio clip just in the subframe. So you'll notice it's on frame 22, but I'm moving it back to an earlier subframe down to subframe 29. I can also use comma and period to move it within the subframe. All I have to do is hold down option and then press period to move it forward 1 80th of a frame or comma to move it backwards 1 80th of a frame at a time. Now, if I throw shift in there, I can move it 10 subframes at a time. So I'll hold down option shift and press period to move it forward 10 subframes at a time and then comma to move it back 10 subframes at a time. All right, next up, I'm gonna show you how to nudge edit points. But before we do that, I'm wondering if I could, you know, nudge you to give me a thumbs up if I'm doing a good job. I really appreciate it. All right, let's select our clip right here and just nudge it, press period to move forward. And you'll notice it moves one frame at a time and it reveals more of the clip on the left and it cuts off the clip on the right as we move it. And then I can do the same thing with comma. I can move it to the left, covering up the clip on the left and on the right, showing more of that clip. Now, if I select that clip, then press P to bring up the position tool, you'll notice it changes to this little arrow. And now when I press period, it does the same thing, but it leaves this gap clip there. So it doesn't affect the clip on the left, but it does affect the clip on the right. If I use comma, it creates a gap clip on the right, and then it overwrites the clip on the left. All right, press A to go back to our select tool, and then select the edge of a clip. Let's try this one right here. Now I can use period to create a ripple edit. Period will move it to the right in time, and then comma will move it to the left in time. So Right now I'm making this middle clip longer and you'll notice the magnetic timeline moves everything to keep the timing. Now if I press T to bring up the trim tool and then select that edit point, it selects both sides of that edit point. And now when I press comma or period, we'll do what's called a roll edit. It rolls that edit point to the left or to the right. It will trim one clip 
and expand another. Of course, I can hold down shift and do this 10 frames at a time as well. All right, with trim tool selected, click on the middle of a clip and it will select both ends of the clip. Now I can slip the media inside that area by pressing comma or period, and I can do it one frame at a time. So now I'm changing the start and end times of that clip without changing its duration, and I'm doing it one frame at a time with comma and period. And I can use shift to do it 10 frames at a time. All right, with trim selected, option click on the center of the clip, and you'll see it's now selected the end point of this clip and the beginning point of the next clip. And now when I press comma or period, it will keep the duration of this middle clip and it will shift it to the left or the right, trimming these two clips on the side. Check it out. So here's comma, it moves that clip and I'm trimming the clip on the left and expanding the clip on the right. And now if I press period, it goes the opposite way. I can hold down shift to do this 10 frames at a time. All right, here's some cool tips for quickly navigating your project. My playhead is right here in the middle of this clip but I wanna to go to the edit points quickly. So I can go up to mark and then select the previous edit point, or I can go to next and select the next edit point. I can also use keyboard shortcuts. I can press the semicolon to go to the previous edit point, or I can press apostrophe to go to the next edit point. I can also use the up and down arrows. Up will take me to the previous edit point and down will take me to the next edit point. If I wanna to go to the beginning of my project, I can go up to mark, go to beginning, or I can just press home. It will take me to the beginning of my project. If I want to go to the end of my project, I'll go to mark, select go to and select end or press the end key. You'll see on these clips, I've got markers, these blue little tags right here. I can quickly navigate to those tabs by going up to mark and selecting previous and then go to marker or I can go to next and select marker. But even faster is to use control semicolon to go to the previous marker or control apostrophe to go to the next marker. And you'll see my playhead quickly jumps from one marker to the other. All right, moving around your project is pretty easy, right? One of the best things about Final Cut Pro is the magnetic timeline. And there are eight tools you should know in order to get the most out of it. Check it out. Magnetic, yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah.